Hello everyone, I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. This presentation is for statistics for environmental professionals at Unity College. It's going to be an excerpt of data from a Morelia Bradley Activity Budget Study conducted here at Behavior Education in 2019. Morelia bredli are also called Brettles pythons or Centralian pythons, and they're a non-venomous constrictor native to the vicinity of Alice Springs, Australia. They are kept worldwide as pets and in zoological facilities. There's minimal scientific research that's been done on their habits under captive management, or what may be best practices for the care and optimal welfare of Morelia bredli under captive management. I put a small team together which consisted of Faith Martin, who's pictured here in the upper left, a working intern from Pikes Peak Community College who was doing this to finish her degree in zookeeping, as well as a group of 34 Morelia Bradley and me. For this excerpt, we're just going to look at 10 of those Morelia Bradley. They were all hatched around the same time. They all arrived around the same time. It was a mixture of males and females, and they were from different breeders. So while some of them were related, the group as a whole was not. The focal behaviors that we were looking at for the whole group of 34 Morelia Bradley, which did also include these 10, were whether they spent most of their time hiding or exposed, terrestrially or arboreally, which means that they use the upper half of their vertical space more than the lower half of their vertical space, or spend more time off the ground or on the ground. Did they spend more time on ledges and shelves or perches? If they were around water, was that water aquatic, as in a water bowl or swimming area, or were they using a moist moss box with damp sphagnum moss in it? How were they locomoting? Were they just moving from one location to another on the same plane, or were they climbing and locomoting from the upper half of their vertical space to the lower and vice versa? When they were resting, what were they doing? What body position were they in? Were they coiled? Were they in a rectilinear position? Were they draped? And then we had to have a category for out of view. If they were hiding and we knew where the animal was hiding, they might have been in an elevated sky hide, they might have been in a ground cave, they might have been under substrate, they might have been in a cardboard box, but we knew that they were hiding in a specific thing, we would mark hiding. If we didn't know where the animal was at all, then we would just mark this category that said out of view. This is what charts would look like if we were charting all of those focal behaviors at once. Both of these are examples of 12 hour observation periods. One is from 11.30 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. and one is from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. where we marked what the animals were doing every 30 minutes. They did spend the majority of their time visible and in the vertical half of their enclosure and when they were resting they were usually coiled or draped. But for this excerpt, we're just looking at how these animals spent use of the vertical space in their enclosure. So did they spend most of their time on the ground or did they spend most of their time up high? That's the specific behaviors that I excerpted for this short presentation. And this is what those look like. We're also looking at a specific 10 animals who were all housed in identical enclosures. Each of their enclosures was identical. Each of their enclosures contained the same furnishings and identical opportunities for behaviors. We looked at these 10 animals over a period of 12 days, and this was that group of animals that are all about the same age and that all arrived here at around the same time. We watched them from about 2 p.m to 10 p.m. over these 12 days, and this is the behavior that we saw. They spent only about 19% of their time on the ground and about 77% of their time off the ground. 3.5% of the time, the group as a whole was unobservable or animals were out of view and we weren't able to know where they were. And then if I did my statistics correctly, which is debatable because I'm not a statistician, I'm an animal behaviorist and trainer. The standard deviation that I got for each of these categories is shown in this rectangle to the far right. So the standard deviation for terrestrial behavior was 9.28%, arboreal behavior 10.57%, and out of view 4.39%. 
The null hypothesis for the Morelia Bradley study excerpt would be that there is no significant difference between time spent terrestrially and time spent arboreally. Observed differences would be due to random chance. The alternative hypothesis is that there is significant difference between the time spent terrestrially and time spent arboreally, and that would look something like this. If T is time spent terrestrially and A is time spent arboreally, the null hypothesis is terrestrial time equals arboreal time. And one alternative hypothesis would be that the time spent terrestrially is less than that spent arboreally. Or an alternative hypothesis might be that time spent terrestrially is greater than time spent arboreally. We know from the data we just saw that the first one is true. The alternative hypothesis that the Morelia Brelli spent less time on the ground than they spent up high is what seems to be indicated across the entire group of 34, not just the 10 that we took this excerpted data from. In summary, the results indicate that Morelia Bradley spend most of their time off the ground, making tubs commonly used in reptile rack systems contrary to optimal welfare, because they do not provide the opportunity to perform species typical behaviors of Morelia Bradley, such as climbing and elevated resting. When organisms are motivated to perform a behavior and can't do that behavior due to environment or circumstances, maladaptive behaviors may emerge. Opportunities for climbing and use of vertical space is recommended for the optimal welfare of Morelia Bradley. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, always be kind and love your animals. If you have any further questions for me, you can reach me through my website at behavioreducation.org or via email at behavioreducationllc at gmail.com. You can also find me through social media like YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Thank you and everybody have a great evening.